Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to welcome you today to the radio broadcast ministry of Matters of the Heart with your radio host, Princess Denise Wright. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly and abundantly glad within this very day on Saturday, January 23rd, 2016. Now, isn't it just amazing? We are now 23 days into the new year. What a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing it is. Um, you know, I never like to start a program without welcoming the <coughs> ministry of the Holy Spirit. And this more, this afternoon, we're going to be ushered into the ministry of the Holy Spirit by one of my special guests today, Pastor Ayakio Watkins. Pastor Watkins, would you lead us with prayer? Amen. Amen. Father, we come to you now. We come just to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for giving us a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. Yes. Thank you for this beautiful day here in the city of St. Petersburg. Yes. We ask now, Lord God, that you would engulf this radio station, this program right now with your presence and with your power. Father, we decrease that you might increase. Have your way, O oh God, today and every day. And Lord, let this message that comes across in the next 30 minutes yes. bring glory and honor to you. And may it find good ground that it will produce a bumper crop and bring those to this place and to this city that will find peace and rest. Yes. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Watkins, for amen. that anointed prayer. Amen. Truly, I felt that, and I pray that our radio listening audience received it into their hearts for impartation to their heart and soul. So just continuing here, we have a great, great program plan for you today with my two special guests who I will announce to you again in just a few minutes. But you know, I always like to start a program off also with a little inspiration. So I'm going to share one with you today that I chose out of my inspirational folder of um, inspirations and it's entitled Gratitude. Now, it reads, uh, well quickly I want to share at least three powerful facts to you about gratitude. First of all, my audience, did you know that gratitude has health benefits? It boosts your mental functioning and changes your psychological state. Yes, it does. Which shifts your psychological state and literally makes you feel and function better. Yes. Uh, number two, gratitude is an emotional trump card. We're not talking about Donald Trump. It's an emotional trump card, okay? And uh, gratitude trumps all other negative human emotions. You can't be in a state of pure gratitude and be envious or jealous or hateful at the exact same time. It doesn't work. Number three, gratitude is a magnet the more you express gratitude, the more the things that you express gratitude for show up in your life, your career, your business, your money, your family, your marriage, your ministry, your community, health, and the like. My friends out there that are listening to me today, my faithful listeners, um, all good things come from above. So ultimately, gratitude is being thankful to God for the gift and the blessing of life because life is a gift. Now, I just want to share those little nuggets into your life today about gratitude. So just know that uh, love and hate cannot work together in harmony. You either love or you hate. You cannot straddle the fence on both. But know that each and every day that you wake up, you want to be thankful to God for waking you up to see another day that you've never seen before. For being able to see, hear, walk, talk, have the use and activities of your limbs. And know that you're not in a coma somewhere you don't even know where you are. You don't even know what day it is. 
So thank God today. If you have not done it already, please give God the honor, praise, and glory that he so rightfully deserves. And that's all I have to say about that. Now, today, we have two special guests in the audience, in radio audience with me. I'm sorry, the radio studio with me today. Um, a lady, a woman of God, a wife, a minister, a pastor, a teacher, who I've been following her ministry for many, many years. And I actually was introduced to her by one of my friends, Sister Jackie McGee, now Elder Jackie McGee. And we have the pastor today, and and even though she's not here to represent her church, but wherever she goes, the Lord is with her. But she may mention that to let you know what church uh, she ministers, she pastors. But we have Pastor Ayakio Watkins with me today, and we have Sister uh, Jerry Jericho. Yes, Jericho Knox. Well, I know when she sent me a little message yesterday on Facebook, it said Jerry. But I was trying to give her her full name. Okay, that's why I had to just ask for her a minute. Jerrica Knox. And we're going to be talking about today about HIV and AIDS. The awareness of it and the epidemic, ep- epidemic that is spreading widespread in our community right here in the great city of St. Petersburg. So there's much to share on that for the next few minutes. So I want you to stay tuned. Start texting anybody that you want to say, you got to listen to this. I want you to just uh, see what they have to say about that because we got some great information to share with you today on HIVs. You may think that, oh, well, we never hear anything about that. Is Did they get that under control? Is that uh, not even nothing to be concerned about these days? Yes, it's still a lot to be concerned about because one time you used to hear about HIV every day. But right now, we know we still hear about cancer every second of the day, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month. But we have some uh, vital information to share with you today regarding HIV and AIDS. Now, Pastor Ayakio Watkins, uh, would you please greet our radio listening audience and start telling them a little bit about what is HIV. Thank you, Denise. Thanks for having us today. We're so excited to be a part of your program. Thank you for coming. And to share this information that, as you said, there are those that really believe that this is no longer a problem. Yes. That HIV is just under control. And in some communities, maybe. But today we want to give some information about HIV and AIDS. First of all, HIV is a virus that really attacks the immune system. And it weakens the system to the point that it's not able to fight off infections or or other uh, diseases. Now, there is a difference between HIV and AIDS. HIV is what you would think of it as the beginning stages. Um, HIV is just you now have the infection of HIV. AIDS, you can think of it as the advanced stages exactly. of HIV. Almost like the advanced stages of cancer. You so when they say four stage, you know you're in trouble. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. So yes. AIDS is like the advanced stages. Yes. And um, I want to make sure everybody knows that just because you're HIV positive does not mean you have AIDS. Okay. It is very possible to be HIV positive and not have AIDS. Right. Okay. So um, what's new in HIV? The medical advancement that has taken place in HIV has been so phenomenal that it's no longer a death sentence. It used to be back in the 80s, a death sentence. I know. And that's why so many people in our community really did not want to deal with the HIV because they automatically, and still today, they automatically think I'm going to die. The lack of knowledge. Yeah. Because I'm just going to confess right here on the radio, when I used to hear about it in the 80s or 90s, I thought you can contract it by kissing and yes. all that stuff. <laughs> yes. Hate and to a say lot it, people, but a dick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people, people do. Yeah, yeah. Some people still yeah. do. And, and, and there's still a lot of, uh, for lack of a better word, there's still a lot of ignorance in our community exactly. about right. it. Yes. Um, because there are still people, right, Jerrica, yeah. that believe that you can become infected or contract the disease by kissing. Or eating yeah. behind someone. Right. So, 
so there's yes, just absolutely. so much that we um that is new now lack of knowledge lack of knowledge mm -hmm. when uh, magic johnson came out and said that he was positive and then when we didn't hear about it anymore and people look at magic and they see magic is big he's strong that's right he's it's alive so up, mm -hmm. like. and, yeah <laughs> and and so what they think they think well it's no longer a problem mm -hmm. that's right you know which is far from the truth right. in our community and when magic was diagnosed was that it's about 25 years or more than 25 years ago? Uh, Magic probably was diagnosed in the 90s, the early 90s. 90s? Okay. All yeah, right. early 90s, somewhere yes. like that. Okay. Um, but there is a real problem in the black community with HIV and AIDS. Just to give you a few statistics, the rate of new infections mm -hmm. in blacks nation nationally is eight times that of whites eight times okay and estimated rate of new infections for black women nationally is 20 times that mm. of white women and then this last one also is astounding black youth between the ages of 13 and 19 of age represent 17 percent of the United States population of youth. However, black youth between the ages of 13 through 19 make up 68% of youth that is carrying the HIV virus. I have one question. Yes. I like to know, is that because we are a minority versus other races as such, such as the Caucasian race or whatever because those numbers are just astounding they are astounding astounding so it just my thing is to think about is because uh the last time I checked I thought we were at least 12 percent or 13 percent of the population correct okay correct so with those kind of figures I'm thinking it's because if it's spreading and then we're such a we're a minority with uh, you know being a part of the population here and the majority are you know it's caucasian or whatever is that because so when you we, we get diagnosed and it's heavy and prevalent in our community that's because we're smaller so i'm just thinking like that's what make our numbers so astounding because I, we are a small part of the population exactly. think of it like this yes we are a small part of the population exactly but yet we have more percentage wise yes we have more it's going to be higher yes it's going to be higher but that is also what makes it more important that yes. we address okay. it right, right. right. Yes, and now my uh, also thank you, uh, Pastor Ayakio. Also, uh, my other special guest today is Jerry Knox. Now, Jerry, what would you like to share on that? Um, mainly that as a community, we need to really look at the stigma of the disease, and meaning that we need to learn to accept people living with HIV in our community. Um, we, a lot of times, we get people coming in that are they're scared and because they're scared they don't want to seek treatment and that raises our numbers and that's part of the problem with us having low numbers for our community so that's a big issue yes okay yes okay all righty well um pastor Watkins um also with the HIV when you were just saying a few minutes ago, just because you have the virus, how many, is there like any uh, diagnosis as far as saying that you can live forever until, um, well, I'm sorry, to, to God call you home, that you can live and have this disease and, um, well, this virus, which is still, to, to, to still deal with it, take your medicine, do whatever, and it never uh, escalate to the level of AIDS that is that possible? It is possible. Yes. Um, with proper care, medication adherence, mm -hmm. good sleeping patterns, good diet, minimizing stress, it is possible for it not to ever move to AIDS. 
Okay. What happens in our community, however, yes. is because of the stigma that Jer Jerrica was just talking about, mm -hmm. because in our community we are so embarrassed about it, um, we have misinformation about it, so we won't go in and get tested. Right. And so by the time we do go in and get tested, it's already AIDS. What are the ways that you actually contract the disease? Which, which, about what forms do you actually contract the disease? Because I think my knowledge of it is uh, sexual relationships, blood transfusions, and something else. I can't think of the other. Breast milk for mothers. Oh, really? So a mother, if well, I she's... I didn't know about that one. If a mother is breastfeeding and she's um, HIV positive. Right. And okay. also through needles. That's Drug. the other one, through drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the needles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those are still the ways that actually, and I'm sure that probably the number one is through sexual relationships. Definitely Correct. where it spreads worldwide uh, quicker. Okay. So what are the treatments that people, uh, uh, you know, when you, what you just explained a minute ago, that sounds just like the format and the... Uh, everything let me see the information they give anyone that has high blood pressure has diabetes has cancer it's all about what you're eating you're resting uh, 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 go easy on yourself less stress in your life mm -hmm. so that seems like the formula for so many conditions out there correct and you know what the solution in our community is really knowing our status what is our status? Get tested early. Mm -hmm. um, and part of what we do at ASAP and at a part of the Ujima uh, Weekend Fest is trying to reduce that stigma so that people get in early and get tested. So ASAP, um, we provide a safe place um, where you can come in and get confidential testing uh, to, so that you can know your status. Okay. Because the sooner you know your status, the better your outcome. The problem has been in our community because of the stigma, because of our lack of knowledge. We just don't want to go in and get tested. And there is this notion that if I don't know, um, it's better. Well, that's about what anything. They won't get tested. They think they're hurting every day. Oh, I'm not going to go. It may be the yes. C word, you know. Yeah. So I'm not going to go. I don't want to know and all that stuff. So and a so, lot of people do just yes. fear. So yeah. HIV is one of those, the sooner you get tested, the soon, the better your outcome. But what we know in the black community is we test late. And so particularly with black women, by the time the numbers I was looking at the other day, black women with AIDS is 21 times that of her white counterpart. And that's due to late testing. That's due to stigma. That's due to socioeconomic issues, not having health care, not knowing that even if you're diagnosed, there are many in our community that believe that if I'm diagnosed, I can't do anything about it because I don't have insurance, which is really not the truth. Um, HIV and AIDS is one of those diseases mm -hmm. that ASAP helps you get the care you need to get into um, treatment as quick as possible. Well, what is ASAP? ASAP is a member of Empath Health. It stands for AIDS Service Association of Pinellas. We're located at 3051st Avenue South, and um, we provide case management, free mm -hmm. testing, uh, food pantry, um, those kind of services so that those that are positive can get the care that they need. And, and I think, uh, to really, to be honest, the number one reason, like you say, especially in our community, is it's just with any condition. They just don't want to know. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Just don't mm -hmm. want to know. <laughs> Correct. I don't care what you got. You, they just don't want to know. Mm -hmm. Because they know your life is going to change uh, uh, forever, pretty much for a moment, unless you are on the list 
to receive a divine miracle from the Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so other than that, they just like they rather continue to live in darkness and not know as uh, then verses being told. And, you know, you go home and you start thinking like, oh, my gosh, this is going to happen to me that uh, my days are numbered. Instead of you thinking like, well, I'm going to live. I'm not going to die. I'm going to live right. until God is ready for me to come home. Mm-hmm. So it does. I think the thing is with most individuals, it's just the fear. Period. It is the fear. The fear. It is the fear. And what we'd like people to know is that the sooner you get in, mm-hmm. know your status, the sooner you get on a medication regimen, mm-hmm. the better your outcomes. Mm-hmm. And you can yes. live a long, healthy life. Right. Yes. But people are, are, you know, the Bible says my people are destroyed. Because of a lack lack of of knowledge. knowledge. And so one of the things that is happening in our community is lack of knowledge. Yes, exactly. And and where do I go? You know, and again, back to, because what has happened is that in the church, the church has always been a place for the people of our community to find what they need to get their needs. Yes, yes, yes. And so I do believe that the church in this season can be part of the solution to this problem. But I do recognize also that we have to educate those in the church. Mm -hmm. We do. We do. Because there's just some things they just will not hit on. Correct. (laughs) Correct. I must say. (laughs) Correct. It's just that I got an agenda and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got to keep the people happy and whatever and That's some things right. you just will not touch oh, jerry what you what do you have for us um no really you guys touched on everything but really the church if they can get involved and i guess from a younger standpoint um kind of guiding us and being there for us yes and enriching our lives um so that we understand that you guys are there for us um I think that's a big thing. I see a lot of um, youth pastors coming along, and they're doing a wonderful job of Mm -hmm. engaging the youth, especially in Pinellas Mm -hmm. County. So I think that's definitely a a location where we should start um, connecting services. I think that would be a great idea. Okay. And uh, Pastor uh, Watkins, do you think, um, um, I'm not sure you're going to laugh at this when I say that, but... (laughs) Um, what well, pastors getting up there sharing a message uh, young people no more sex what do you think about that making an announcement young people <laughs> no more sex <laughs> well you know being a pastor I've, I've been that pastor that has taught abstinence um, and they they think it's impossible um, but that that brings about the teaching you yes. know and 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 understand you have to teach and everybody won't grab that message right. wow. everybody won't buy into that message right right right, right. they're but, not but yeah. we love them anyway that's right. right because Christ called us to love them anyway yes right and so um you know think i think about my walk and how you know i didn't always buy into the concept that's right we <laughs> had to know? get there ourselves. yeah i had to I get know. there but that is one of the reasons why the ujima weekend fest is so important what is that that is ujima, ujima stands for it is one of the tenets of kwanzaa and it means collective work and responsi- responsibility. It means my brothers and sisters' issues are my issues, and we will solve them together. So we have an Ujima Weekend Fest on the first weekend, February, yes. February 6th mm-hmm. and 7th. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a two-day event, Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, we will be at the James B. Sanderland Family Neighborhood Center, okay. and it actually is a festival. Okay. And um, you, we're going to provide free food, free entertainment, the children activities such as face painting, African dancers, vendors, and uh, free health screenings. So we'll have that on Saturday, and that's from noon to four. 
Where's that at again? James B. Sanderlin Center, Center? Oh, on no, 22nd, 22nd Avenue South, yes, 2335 yes. 22nd Avenue South. Yes. And that is going to be a festival. It is a multi-generational family festival. Right. So bring all your children, all your families, grandma, auntie, everybody. It's just going to be a festival. Okay. And then on Sunday... That is the actual day, National Black HIV Awareness Mm -hmm. Day. And that is where we're going to have a special service, church service, Uh at the hospice building, um, 3051st Avenue South. And then there are churches in the community that are doing special activities. Some churches will have people that are positive, that will talk about their journey, We're going to have things in the bulletins of some churches, brochures. So it's it's going to be a great weekend. We are honoring uh, Reverend Bernard Smith, who passed on December the 8th. Yes, out of Clearwater. Out of Clearwater. Mm -hmm. He was the first pastor in this community in the AME church to have HIV testing out of his church. And so we're doing all of this in honor of him. Praise God. Well, looking at, we got about one minute or so. Uh, Jerry, would you like to have any closing remarks to our audience today regarding uh, the virus, HIV? Um, Just to say that thank you for having us. And also, if you need any services to come to ASAP, we are there for you. Even if you have a question, you can come in and confidentially get it answered. And give them that address again. It is 3050 First Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33712, right across from the YMCA. Okay, and that phone number would be, if they have a question? 727-328-3260. All right, and Pastor Watkins, any closing remark that you'd like to leave with our audience today? Yes, also I'd like to leave with them the website mm-hmm. for ASAP. Yes. There's lots of great information about HIV, www.asapservices.org. Okay. Feel free to, to call us. Yes. Um, Jericho and myself, we are testers. And so we will provide that care that you need and help move away the fear. Yep. That's mm-hmm. right. Well, I want to thank both of my special guests today, Pastor Ayakio Watkins and Sister Jerrica Knox. This has been a very educational and informative broadcast today. I want to thank you. I'm going to have to have you all come back another time. <laughs> okay. Also, thank you. to just continue on health, health forums to talk about what's going on in our community and what we can do to get the help that we need. And I want to thank my radio listening audience today for tuning in to another radio broadcast of Matters of the Heart with your radio host, Princess Denise Wright. Have a God-blessed day. Amen.